Stop it. So what's happening when you're sticking this down on this, um, is you're sticking this tube down, but then close to the bottom of the fridge, like maybe about this, this high at the bottom, uh, there's a plate which is connected to the magnet insert. And that plate has an extra tube in it. And at the front of the tube is actually, uh, it's both threaded and uh, bevel. So the threads are when you have the other tube transfer tube in, it's screwed into the threads. Mm -hmm. And that, this, this tube which is sitting there just sort of snakes down and goes to the very bottom of the door. So that when we're putting the nitrogen in and we're taking it out, we actually have a connection out of the bottom of the door. And the same in here. So when we put it all the way down, it should, it, the, the end of this will actually fit into that, make that double. And so we're putting the helium down and actually goes to the extra tube all the way to the bottom. Okay. Now, sometime later, when we're putting helium in, and there's already helium in the bottom, we, may not, we don't want to necessarily put it all the way in to go to the bottom of the doer. Because okay. we, we don't want to force gas into the, into, into the liquid at the bottom that's already there. Yeah. So we just, we just want to, we'll, we'll, we won't put it down quite all the way and leave a little space there. So the tube stands where this tube is. Uh, but for the first kind, it's where you want to put it all the way in. Okay. Two this is surround, this is surrounding the the back in the canister, right? This is this is all, all outside the back. Yeah, this is just the big door, and then the vacuum can is in there. So right in the vacuum can has about a tour of in it for exchange gas. Oh, okay. um, the other thing we'll have to do is uh, eventually once you get it all the way down, so we're, we're sort of pressurizing that by boiling out helium as you put that transfer tube in. Yeah. But eventually, when the first tube will be all the way down and cool, we need to actually put helium into that door to pressurize it. To make sure it transfers. Okay. So um, they have uh, the helium tank downstairs, and uh, there's just a hose clamp that just dropped off this. Uh, so take take this and the hose clamp and this, and uh, connect those connect the two together okay. in the appropriate fashion. Yeah, we probably don't have enough uh, helium in, in that in that helium cylinder. We, we, we have enough for this transfer, or not? Uh, probably. We'll yeah, okay. probably. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, we'll, we'll try to make it through this transfer and then yeah. uh, change yeah. it out. So the other cell, new cylinder was down there. Yeah. yeah. get all the way down. So now open that open that valve and it may there's probably a little question of something it'll first we'll see what happens. 
So basically, I'm going to have this line pressurized, and at some point along the line, I'll have a valve that I can open and close. I'm just going to go reverse initially. Okay. Um, so I'll usually just use the valve over on that pin there, because that's closed right now. So, uh, but as it slows down, so come around, come around the other side. So. so the, the tanks downstairs, it comes up through this line here. So there's one valve here, which I'm using to control. The, I'm, I only have this little ways over, I'm using it to control the valve. And then this goes to here, coming into the healing section there. So this valve is closed right now. And then there's another valve. I'm using this, this thing. So this is all the way over. And that's going to your valve over there, which is open on the tank. So if I want to give it a little burst, this is the one valve between the pressurized side and the pressurized side. So I could just do like something like that. And uh, I don't know if, it'll, if that's enough to get it to react, but uh, what I'll usually do is every once in a while I'll just give a little, little burst like that to sort of speed things up. So I think go a little faster than that, so I'm going to longer burst. Okay. And again, there's a delay, so I have to sort of wait to see whether it's had the proper effect. So let's start going a little bit faster. Eventually, we'll get to the point where. Um, you could actually have it just uh, open at a very low pressure and continue the pressurizing. When we do later transfers and there's already liquid in the doer, uh, we'll just have some continual pressure that we can adjust on the fly and stuff like that. But for the first transfer, we go kind of slowly, so slow reverse the liquid. And the temperature started to go down, which is good. <laughs> So, and then this is, so this is a gauge, I put it by 950 millitore. And uh, so we can also, that's another indication of our temperature. Okay. You probably can also sometimes check how, how, how many, uh, how much helium do we have? Yeah, so we can, why don't we go check that now? Now we, we spent this time, but it was, we started out with about 70. Yeah. Okay. So you're down to 74. Mm -hmm. All right. So very, you put very little, uh, first of all, there's, there's no liquid in there yet. Um, so basically all that, all that liquid has just been gasified, but it's mm -hmm. also used to cool things. Um, so okay. as I say, they recommend about what, five to ten liters an hour. So you can use, you can only sort of check every fifteen minutes, see if you've gone down another liter or two. Oh, that's it. That'd be what we make. To say I usually use that um, that up there and go faster. Yeah. So the next, uh, how many hours have you just spent um, pressurizing on occasion and checking uh, levels to drop levels to make sure it's going down. Checking the recovery to make sure it's recovering your reason for nothing strange is going on. And then I can monitor the temperature too to make sure that's not going to And initially the temperature will drop kind of slowly uh, and then it'll start to pick up speed. So I think if I was doing, if it just took three or four hours, let's say it took uh, like four hours, I mean, the first hour I might go whatever down to uh, 100 or something like that. The next hour I might go down to to 80, and an hour after that, I might go from like 80 all the way down to 20 or something. Mm -hmm. it'll, start, it'll start to speed up quite a bit. The, the level meter is still off right now. Yeah, right? so we can okay. we can turn this on too. So this is this should can, should be connected. I can see it's there. So this is the uh, level meter, um, which is on the sample holds. So it gives us a ridiculous reading. Right now. I put it on continuous for a second. So that's a normal reading. It gives a slightly negative reading when it starts out. And actually that will change, I think, uh, not because you get a level, but as, it, as the film meter itself cools, uh, you'll see that change. Right. At room temperature, like a negative 12 or yeah. something like that. So only when we start to get sort of positive numbers on here, we actually level. If you look, here's a diagram of the fridge sideways. 